John am your brother and your partner in suffering and in God's kingdom and in the patient endurance to which Jesus calls us. I was exiled to the island of Patmos for preaching the word of God and for my testimony about Jesus. I just want to talk to you for a little while from the subject exiled. Exiled. Thank you, Lord. Y'all ready for the word? Yes, ma'am. Okay, nobody sleep on me already. All right, all right, all right, all right. Exile, exile. I'm excited about this word. Y'all gonna have to suffer me today. Just give me a few moments here. The book of Revelation, God use me to your glory, none of me, God, all of you, is a very interesting book. Mm -hmm. It's the only book that I just share with you in the Bible that promises to bless you if you read or hear it. So those of us who were Bible app, who were either here in the sanctuary or on the conference call, we decided to receive the blessings that God wants to give us as we go through this book. The vessel that God uses to write this book is John. John is one of the original 12 disciples that were with Jesus during his earthly ministry. Scholars have traced John's ministry, and it's believed that he was persecuted in Rome with other Christians, and they tried to make him a martyr as well by trying to boil him alive in oil. But he miraculously survived, so they exiled him to the island of Patmos. God had a plan for his life. When God has a plan for your life, the devil can't even kill you. He can't take you out. He might be allowed to try, but the whole time he's trying, God is sitting in heaven shaking his head saying, when will that devil learn? You can't touch God's anointed unless God says so. Amen? The folk who were trying to kill Daniel found out when they threw him in the lion's den with that hungry lion because they came back expecting Daniel to be torn into pieces and Daniel was sitting up in there chilling with the lion. All right. All right. They thought that when they threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, but they came back expecting to find ashes and, and burnt up clothes, but when they came back, not only were they still walking around alive in the fire, but there were four people All up right. there. Come on now. So, my God, you can't touch God's people without God's permission. All right. My God, you can't touch God's anointed if God is not finished with them yet. Can I get an amen on that one? So you can't touch me unless God says so. Like I told y'all last Sunday, if what I see is not what I saw, then God is not finished. John had a date with the island of Patmos, and God was going to see to it that he kept the date. Some might say that being exiled, John received the better end of the deal because history reveals that all the other original disciples were martyred except for Judas, who of course committed suicide after he betrayed Jesus. Go with me. Simon Peter, he was crucified upside down because he didn't want to be crucified in the same position or the same direction as Jesus because he didn't feel worthy. Jude was crucified or clubbed to death and then he was sawed into pieces. Andrew was crucified upside down on an X-shaped cross. Philip was crucified. James was thrown off the temple and stoned by the scribes and the Pharisees. Matthew was burned alive. Bartholomew was skinned alive and then beheaded. Thomas was stabbed to death with a spear. Simon the Zealot was sawed into pieces as well. And James, the brother of John, was beheaded. Hmm. So some might say, because he was the disciple Jesus loved, he got the better end of the deal. But did he really? I believe scripture proves to us that being alone is one of the worst things you can experience. In the book of Genesis, chapter 2, after God formed Adam, it says he breathed the breath of life into him and Adam became a living soul. Stay with me. Adam had oxygen.
oxygen flowing through his lungs. God gave him beautiful scenery to look at. He had beautiful things to look at. He had delicious food everywhere he turned. Adam had wealth because the Bible says gold was there around him. He had no sickness in him. He had no disease in him. He had fellowship with God. Everything Adam could possibly want. The things people desire to have today. The things people will kill you for today. Adam had it, but even with all those things, God still said, it ain't good. With all that gold around him, God said, it ain't good. With all that food around him, God said, it ain't good. He had no sickness, no disease. God still said, it ain't good. Adam had oxygen flowing through his lungs, and God still said, it ain't good. Why? Because you're alone. Hmm. I jokingly asked Pastor D, I said, aren't you glad God made woman? Because based on scripture, we're more valuable than oxygen. <laughs> Isn't that what God pretty much said to him? We're right up there with oxygen. Y'all didn't get that. <laughs> Y'all didn't get that. <laughs> He had everything, and God said it ain't good until he made a woman from his rib. So if you breathe it, <laughs> and don't have a woman, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. It ain't good. <laughs> Just a minute ago, 
But now you throw in shade. I, I don't know what in the world is going on. My position has been disturbed. Things cease to function the way they normally function. I'm in exile. I'm on the island of Patmos. How many of you got some areas in your life where you're in exile? You don't know how you got there. But where you're living right now don't look like home. It's not what you're used to. It seems like somebody came in in the middle of the night, threw a hood over your head, put a sack on your head, and dropped you in the middle of nowhere. You feel like you've been uprooted, disturbed, and in unfamiliar territory. Exile. And I'm almost through. There are different kinds of exile. Come on now, make it plain. You got involuntary exile. You don't know how you got there, but you're there. I don't want to be here, but I'm here. I don't want to be unemployed, but I am. I don't want to be homeless, but I am. I don't want to be sick, but I am. I don't want to be single, but I am. I don't want to be broke, but the Lent shows I am. <laughs> the question is, how are you going to deal with it? How are you going to respond to it? Are you just going to deny that you're there and choose not to deal with it? Or are you going to use the time that you're there wisely? and learn from it so you can get off the island. Amen. Amen. Then you've got self-imposed exile. You're there because you want to be there. You're exile, in exile by choice. You're in exile because you want to be. You on purpose disturbed your own position. You on purpose shut folk out. You on purpose isolate yourself and won't talk to people. You won't let people who want to be there for you be there for you. Well, if you are experiencing self-imposed exile, be very careful. Because that is indeed a trick of the enemy. Amen. He knows the word. He knows God's word. Okay. He knows what I just told y'all about being alone. He knows God said it's not good. So, of course, he wants you to do what God says not to do. He knows that once you isolate yourself long enough, it's hard to get off the island. Come on now. And that's what he wants. Jesus. He wants you Jesus. to be alone so he can continue to work on your mind. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. Then we got mental exile. Well. People who are mentally checked out. Mm. Their bodies are with you, but their minds are somewhere else. Mama. For some, mental diseases are the culprit, but I'm talking about healthy folk. As I look around, and yes, even in my own life, I realize some changes need to take place. Hear me now. These days, we are so bombarded by a world of technology that we have allowed our minds to become exiled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Granted, there's a place and a time for technology, but we have become addicted to mental exile. Follow me here. Okay. Let's see if you fall into one of these categories. Do you get a rush because you can't wait to get home to get on your computer? Mm. <laughs> you can't wait until you stop your car before you check your cell phone? Mm. You spend more time on the computer or cell phone than you do with your spouse or your family. Well. <laughs> you text folk who are sitting right beside you. Oh, wow. When someone is talking to you, you have to constantly say, huh, because you don't hear what they say. Uh, 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 uh. You're in mental exile. Okay. Your body is present, but your mind is on the island of Patmos. Come on, man. Mm. I was sitting somewhere the other day, and every person that was sitting around me was in exile. Mm. They were on their cell phone, a pad, or some type of gadget. They were physically in the room, but their minds were somewhere else. And then I looked down at my hand, and I was on my cell phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have got to take a break, 
church. And hear me now, because God showed this to me this morning. Technology is wonderful, but we've got to start back talking to each other. Come on. Yes. Come on. We're going to start talking to one another and stop texting somebody who's sitting right beside you. Strike up a conversation. Yes. Before you know it, we're going to lose how to talk to folk. That's right. Because we're texting everything. And I've even seen it now. People are more comfortable to text you than to tell you what they want to tell you to your face. Amen. <laughs> the computers, every time I turn around, Jerry on the computer, Jay on the computer, I was sitting in the house the other day and looked up everybody on the catcher. Everybody, daddy, me, the girl, everybody on the gadget. And so we try to make sure Sundays we put the phones up and we watch a movie or we do something together and talk to one another. Right. People don't sit at the table no more for dinner. Come on. Uh-uh. We used to sit at the table. Everybody had to be at the table at a certain time to eat dinner Amen. together. Amen. We don't do that no more. Mm-hmm. When it's time to eat, instead of calling your kids, you text them, food ready. <laughs> we in mental exile. I mean, really, we driving down the road. People driving and texting at the same time, not focusing on the road. That's why there's so many wrecks now. Folks are in mental exile trying to operate a vehicular mobile. Did I say that right? Yes, yes. you did. Yes. So we have got to get out of mental exile. Our minds in Patmos. some areas of our lives that we are in spiritual exile. We're living on the island of Patmos and in some cases we ain't even trying to get off the island. We have exiled ourselves from God and sometimes we don't know how to find our way back. Spiritual exile. God will send a ship to get us off. And we act like we don't even see the ship. Didn't he tell us he'd make a way of escape? (laughs) He's got a ship that runs right by the Isle of Patmos that says escape on it. That's the name of the ship. (laughs) And we won't even get on it. Won't even look in its direction. Because our flesh is crying louder. And it's saying stay. 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 Yeah. But we got to get on that ship if we want to get closer to God in that area of our lives. Amen? Amen? Amen. So let me help you real quick. Depending upon the type of exile you're dealing with, one of these ways can help you get off the island. Worship. Well. When John was on the island before he received the revelation, the Bible says it was on, on, on the Lord's day. Of course, Saturday for them, we worship Sunday, but the Lord's day, he was worshiping. So if you on the island, worship. Worship God. Invite him into that area of your life. Give him your time. Surrender yourself. Surrender that area to him and worship him. Trust God. I told you a couple Sundays, sit in the chair to remind you that you don't trust him like you should. You got to trust God in that area of your life so you can get off that island. Ask him to help you, and he'll help you. Complete the task. John, history has it, that once he received the revelation and wrote the letters, the very next day or week, he was let go and got off the island. So God is saying to some of you, until you do what you were sent there to do, mm-hmm. until you complete the task, you are going to remain exiled. Oh because God has a job for you to do. He's trying to reveal himself to you. There's a deeper revelation God wants to give you. And on that note, some of you saying, God, I want a deeper revelation. God, I want more anointing. You got to be exiled sometimes. 
Because that deeper anointing, that deeper revelation of who Jesus Christ is, who God is, who you are. Because we found out Friday, we are a kingdom of priests. Whenever you're exiled, you begin to understand deeper who you are. Because sometimes when you're in the city, with all that noise, you can't hear what God is trying to tell you. So God has to get you by yourself. God has to get you exiled in a place where you'll listen to him. So complete the task. Complete what God is asking you to do, and then you'll be let go. Mm. Amen? Amen. Amen. The deeper revelation you've been asking God for again, you might have to sit in exile for a while. Mm. So if you're in exile, you know what? You need to be praising God. Amen. You need to be worshiping God if God placed you there. Now, if you placed your own self there, just get up and walk. <laughs> It's just that simple. If you place yourself there, get up and walk. Nothing's holding you there but you. And that's what I had to learn in certain areas of my life. I was holding myself there. But if God has you there, he has you there for a reason. And once you learn what he sent you there to learn or do what he sent you there to do, then you'll be released. 